To call Guacamele anything other than homage is downright uninformed, but it's surprising just how well it manages to rework its inspirations to form a game with a fresh and distinct identity. Those in the know will quickly recognize hints of Metroid, and even Portal, among others, but these references never quite dominate the experience. They've inspired parts of the world, and to a larger extent, the gameplay. But Guacamele stands tall thanks to its brilliantly expressive design and steady pace, of which the biggest flaw is that the fun comes to an end sooner than any game of this caliber should. As Juan Aquacave, a humble agave farmer and tequila distiller, your rise to luchador fame is fueled by the kidnapping of an old acquaintance turned recent love interest, the nameless daughter of El Presidente. The undead kidnapper, Carlos Calaca, strikes during the Dia de los Muertos festival. Juan is ultimately banished to the land of the dead by Calaca, but here, he meets the guardian of the mask, who bestows the legendary luchador relic unto the humble farmer. Not long after, Juan's resurrected into the land of the living as a superpowered luchador and sets off after his kidnapped love. The trite conflict between hero and kidnapper, though tired and cliche, is merely a catalyst that gets things rolling. The real driving force for the player is Juan's growth as a superhero. His 2D crusade sees you ascending mountaintops, exploring caverns, and platforming among the trees, but you'll spend a lot of time smacking enemies around and tossing them into blunt objects along the way. From these two types of attacks spring dozens of opportunities for tactical and offensive variety. Juan's skill set evolves rapidly, but the game is good about teaching you the fundamentals of each maneuver. New moves and abilities are earned by discovering Chuzo statues strewn about the world. They belong to a grumpy yet affable goat herder who imparts the knowledge of moves such as Olmec's headbutt and the goat climb, improving your ability to explore the environment and manhandle Escalatos, a delight which rarely gets old. Whether it's the promise of new abilities, a laugh, or Juan's next rumble, there's always something in Guacamele just around the corner that grabs your attention. Juan eventually earns the ability to teleport between the lands of the living and the dead. The alternate dimensions bring different moods and experiences to the table, defined by their respective soundtracks and color palettes. But certain enemies and objects are also hidden between dimensions. The progression of locales and challenges is paced well, accented by charming music and expressive colors. But there are occasional dips when the action feels uninspired relative to the world around it. These moments are pretty easy to spot. Rather than introduce a new type of challenge, the game simply throws more of the same enemies on the screen. Thankfully, these moments are usually fleeting. Guacamele hardly punishes failure. It practically encourages you to take chances by being so forgiving. When Juan plummets off a cliff or platform, for example, he's magically whisked back to safety without penalty. If he happens to run out of health, he's revived at the last checkpoint, usually quite nearby. Guacamele's meager consequences keep the action moving at a steady clip, but, considering the exacting nature of the game's design, there should be a greater penalty for sloppy performances. Local co-op with the second player as Tostada is an option, but its good qualities don't meaningfully benefit the overall experience. When characters are at opposing ends of the screen, the first to move into a new area takes priority, causing the other player to automatically appear nearby. If you do get separated, either player may manually activate the bubble mode in order to skip obstacles and catch up to the leader. Apart from stringing together impromptu tag team combos, there's nothing in Guacamele that truly benefits from the addition of another player. All things considered, Guacamele is one of the strongest games on the PlayStation Network, period. The responsive controls and grin-inducing sense of humor make it near impossible to put down. It's chock full of pop culture references, yet it doesn't feel patronizing when there's a nod to your favorite 8-bit game. When Guacamele isn't trying to make you laugh, occasional moments of drama and intense action fill you with a sense of purpose and emphasize Juan's triumphant rise to superhero status. After hitting so many high notes, Guacamele's conclusion is a bittersweet farewell, but every adventure, even the best of them, eventually comes to an end.